We are starting with Handel today because it's the prelude and the postlude for Sunday. So these are this is the Alamand and the Courant from the Handel Suite in G major that I played, I guess, last week, maybe the week before. Anyway, uh, the Alamand and the Courant, uh, which are two dance movements from the Handel Suite in G major. Uh, the first is the prelude, the second is the postlude.
which I sort of threw off the symmetry for the day because I was going to spend the day playing romantic music. Um, um, this was sort of my, oh, I want to, I'll start with this, and then this piece made me think of that piece, and that piece made me think of this piece, and um, um, so I am going to start with uh, one of the Mendelssohn songs without words, which is actually the very first one. So this is Opus 19, number one. A lot of them have descriptive titles. For instance, the second one is called Regrets, and the third one is called Hunting Song, and the fourth one is called Confidence, and so forth and so on. This one doesn't have a title, um, it, it, but it's the first of the Mendelssohn songs without words. And this made me think of a, a piece by um, Edward um, McDowell, the American composer, which I will pay, play next. And that made me think of a piece of, um, a couple of pieces actually, of Edward McDowell from um, the uh, um, Woodland Sketches, they're called. Um, um, this is uh, Opus 51. Um, Edward, Edward McDowell was American. He was, he was born in New York City in um, 1860 and died in um, 1908. So another, 
person who did not live very long. Um, he um, um, was a sort of child, one of the, another one of these child piano prodigies. Um, and um, at the age of 14, his mother moved with him to Paris to study at the Paris Conservatoire um, and because he had won um, one of the international student scholarships to the Paris Conservatoire. So he, he graduated from the Paris Conservatoire and then went to Germany um, to study with Franz Liszt. Um, Liszt was a, was a big a promoter of McDowell and his music in Germany. And he spent four or five years, he and his wife, in Germany. And um, then he moved back to the US in like 1885 or 86 and um, became the head of uh, the newly founded music department at Columbia University. Um, and um, he, he um, left the university and there was a great deal of unpleasantness um, looking back on um, the descriptions of what happened, it sounds like McDowell developed Alzheimer's or some form of uh, very uh, young onset dementia. Um, but the reason I say Alzheimer's is because apparently he had became a very argumentative and confrontive and combative person and um, had a lot of trouble with Columbia University. Um, and he gradually um, descended into, you know, last stages of whatever type of dementia he had. And by the time he died at 48, um, he was completely, uh, you know, he was mentally an infant. I mean, he had just lost all capacity to speak, to reason. Um, um, and it was a very unfortunate situation. Um, his wife, who lived to be 100 years old, she lived like until almost 1960, um, left their home. They had a summer home in Peterborough, New Hampshire. And she left it to the American um, Artist Foundation. I'm, I'm sure some of you have actually heard of the McDowell Colony. Um, well, that's where it comes from. Um, his wife left, left it in a bunch of money to endow people to be able to pursue their artistic endeavors and be supported at the McDowell Car Colony in Peterborough, New Hampshire. Um, um, he was a wildly popular composer in, in his lifetime. Um, and he wrote a whole bunch of piano music and three or four piano concertos and a big piano sonata. But I'm going to play two of his little miniatures from Woodland Sketches. Um, probably the most popular piece he ever wrote, which is called To a Wild Rose. And another called um, At an Old Trysting Place. They're very, very, very um, typical of late, they were, they were written, published in 1896. And they're very typical of that gilded age. Um, I don't want to call it sentimentality, but that, you know, that gilded age approach to romance and emotion and, um, you know, very, um, uh, you know, Edwardian and, and, um, sentimental in its way, but very good music. So, To a Wild Rose and At an Old Trysting Place. Um, rumor has it that these were written um, for his wife um, and they were sort of like a courting present.
And that made me think of these three, this, 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 this suite that of, of Zez Comfrey, um, which he calls Three Little Oddities. Um, uh, 1923, um, these were written. So, um, sort of the generation after, um, after McDowell. Um, Zez Comfrey, Zez was, was his nickname. His real name was, um, Edward or something. And he had a very sort of bizarre middle name. I, I can't remember it off the, off, off the, um, Alzada or something like that. And that's where Zez com comes from. Um, he was born in um, Peru, Illinois, um, and um, came from a musical family. His brother was a lifelong church organist, and um, he was um, went to the uh, Chicago Institute of Music as a pianist, was a good pianist. Um, um, but he went into writing, um, you know, um, character pieces, you would call them, although very high class character pieces. Um, um, and uh, he, he calls this um, a suite for pianoforte, three little oddities. The first is impromptu, is, he calls it impromptu. The second one is a romanza. Nope, that's the third one. The second one he calls a novelette. Um, so it's a little story of some kind. And the third one is a romanza. Um, so, and uh, the McDowell made me think of them. There's a lot of um, sort of early jazz influence and a lot of French Debussy and Ravel influence in them. <laughs>